Hey folks, Jonathan here. Decided I would try to do maybe a start on this. Uh, I think it's a 1947, but it's a Worthington tractor. And this has got a Chrysler Industrial Engine, which uh, is basically just a Dodge engine. And I figured we would, uh, we got to do a few things to it before we can try to start it. This particular engine, uh, it's a 218 uh, Flathead 6. And like I said before, it's the same engine as I have in that Dodge truck right there. And this thing, the oil don't look bad in it. It turns over. Uh, by hand, I haven't put a battery in it. Uh, but the bad thing about it that I don't like it was sitting without an air cleaner, and I don't like the looks inside the, the carburetor. So we're probably going to go ahead and pull it off. I normally don't. I'm more normally just go ahead and get them, you know, try to get them started and pour some gas down the carburetor. But I don't want to suck the dirt that's in the carburetor down in the engine. And also, we got an issue with the the paint that's on it. And I'll show you that. Okay, all this flaking paint. Uh, as you can see, it's just falling off. And evidently, see this thing, you can see the original orange under it, and then somebody painted it red, and then somebody painted it black. So all the paint's falling off. And as you can see, there's a cutout or a, a indentation here for the air cleaner in front of this gas tank. And uh, I don't want the flaking paint to get down the carburetor. And you can see uh, maybe some dead spiders and dirt cobwebs choke plates got you know well that's that's actually dirt it's not even rust but it's so rough down in there that we're going to go ahead and uh pull the carburetor off and clean it up some you can see the spark plugs are are rusted in and dirt piled around them so i may bring the air hose down here and blow this thing off which is you most of y'all know that it that's not like me i usually don't do that but but we're going to clean things up just a little bit I'll get the carburetor off and see if I can get some get it clean get a battery in it see if I can get the engine to roll over okay I took the air hose blew everything off I pulled the carburetor loose in the bottom I didn't take any of the linkage or anything off and I just flipped it up to where I could blow everything from the bottom out make sure there was nothing in it so I think we're good there uh, don't have time to take it off clean it and put it back on do it right so we're just gonna try to get it started I did find another tag on it this one says Robbins 2060 and we got a town here real close to us called Robbins so maybe this was a town mower or something like that you know I don't know why they would pull reels unless it was on a football field or something like that but who knows all right so I haven't done anything yet besides blow it off and uh, I started this video hours ago so I keep having to leave on record calls so we're working as fast as we can work and I'm not sure that I'll have this done or even started this evening it might be tomorrow before I, or even the next day before I get time but I want to go ahead and do what I can do and videotape as much as I can uh, I was trying to see this thing this starter has got a solenoid mounted down on the bottom of it which is a bad place to mount it really but maybe it'll work we'll see that's the positive cable. We'll just let's see if this one's hooked up. Positive. Yep. No, this one they got hooked. Okay, they got hooked positive ground. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the negative. You still don't want the negative grounding out, so I don't know how that was working out with that box. But uh, And as you can see, this is the positive side. So this is a, another positive ground system. So we'll probably grab the coal and stuff off the other one I've already got set up for. It. But uh, I want to see the points. You can see one of the holes there. Full of dirt daubers on the cat. So just you just have to trust me on this one. When I tell you that it's been a long time since this thing has ran, I don't know how long, but it's been a long time. Whew. Oh well, we got a cover over the points. Okay, we finally got it off. Uh, I was figuring that was just a thin piece of sheet metal, but as you can see, it's a hunk of aluminum and riveted to a piece of sheet metal so actually a whole lot nicer piece than what I thought I bent the corner there edge of it a little bit getting it off but it's not a problem bend that right back down so we didn't hurt anything which is a good thing because I figured it wasn't gonna come off well the points are 
loose in there. They'll clean up, I'm sure. I think we can work with that. All right, before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and try to get a battery in this thing. All right, let's get some cables unhooked and uh, see if we can get something figured out. Yeah, I wonder how many times that shorted out. Okay, well luckily this thing came off. The bolt has already, both ends of the bolt has rusted off. The nut end and the head. So that's how long that's been on there. I'll have to clean that rudder button up a little bit. Now, this one's rusted down to nothing. I'll we'll probably have to fight this one loose. So. Alright, I'll get it. Okay, so I just got this battery thrown up here temporary, and this is the one that was in the four wheel drive. It's a uh, 540 cold cranking amp, so it's a lawnmower battery anyway in my book. But anyway, uh, solenoid's no good. Uh, trying to cross it, I'm getting nothing, but I do have power down here. So what I'm going to do, is we're going to short between here and the positive down underneath. Uh, you can see it but it's down underneath the starter but it's actually the power going into the starter so we're just going to bypass the maybe we won't throw a bunch of sparks we're going to bypass the uh, solenoid all together to start it anyway even though it does need a solenoid and uh, it does seem to roll over pretty good it don't have a don't sound like it's got a lot of compression okay what we're gonna do now is uh, pull the points out real quick we'll clean them I'll get the other uh, coal wired up real quick and then we'll see what uh, what happens and again I apologize for this light because the sun shining through the trees I think it's just tricking the camera the camera don't never know when to uh, focus or not to focus, but uh, anyway, that don't look the best in the world. This may stop us right here. Yeah, the carbon's burn out of it. It's not sticking down through. Looks like it's got a crack. Anyway, this is pretty funny though. I kind of like that. If you see the scratches, the scratches was put in there to keep that crack from running from one to the other and somebody has scratched two scratches in it so it wouldn't jump now that's what you do when you don't have any money and you uh you can't afford just to run out and buy a, a cap so uh i've been there done that on things so that's pretty funny though if you can see there should be a piece of carbon in here sticking down and there should be a spring on top of it or usually is and when usually if there's not a spring then this piece actually comes up as a spring and you know you get, but you really need to have a spring on there somewhere so uh, it's missing and uh, we can clean we can clean this rotor up okay so we're back on track here I found another cap and it has a good piece of carbon in there with the spring uh, clean out I'll clean it up a little bit inside but I think this will do for us. I didn't see any cracks in it, so I think we'll be okay. So we'll get this one off, get it changed, and then get them points cleaned and see if we can get this thing firing. Okay, folks, I was just going to clean this one up and use it, but as you can see, it's in rough shape. I found another one in the shop. This one here would have just ate that carbon right up. There wouldn't be nothing left of it. This one here is probably not the best, but it'll do. And, uh, Maybe we can get started with that, and you can see this is flat on the end from wear and rust, and this one's rounded a little bit to the contour of the distributor cap. So this button is just just rotted away. All right, folks, I got Jordan out here helping me. Oh, I'm sorry, Street Drive 64. Spark right here. I see it first running through. Does that surprise you? Not at all. It'll just skip it once on it. Let's roll it. We want to get it hit. 
back over tomorrow all right folks it's the next day we're back out here with this tractor I uh, wanted to get it started early but I had the toes to do so uh, see if I can get back on it here the uh, it's hitting pretty hard trying to start it's hard to, it's, you probably can't hear it on the camera because this is one of the few engines old engines I've started that actually has exhaust running all the way out to the back so but it's trying but every time it tries you know of course it kicks that starter out and uh, it's going to do that, so, you know, eventually here we'll get it to fire up. Play with it a little more, see what happens. It'd be nice if I had a uh, solenoid on it, but we'll get by. Okay, folks, we're going to try it again. I think uh, the compression's not picking up on it like most of the time when you uh, when you go to starting on one that's been sitting on for years and years. So I don't know if it's going to come up or if we're going to be able to. When we get it started one time, we'll be fine. Uh, we're going to try this. If it don't work out, we're going to change spark plugs and go from there. the front four spark plugs in this thing and it had champions in it put some ACs in it the spark plugs are some that uh, Johnny Burns had sent uh, the same one that sent Jordan the uh, Edelbrock carburetor and I'm sorry the Carter same thing but uh, anyway uh, the plugs didn't look terrible but uh, almost like maybe I wasn't getting enough fuel to it but I, I'd say it's because there's not enough vacuum because uh, I think there's some valve sticking in it and if we ever get fired up once, we'll get some heat in it to where things will free up. You know, we might be okay, but we're going to keep trying. We may not get this one started. You never know.
Okay, folks, we're having trouble getting this thing started. I don't think we've got enough compression. So what we're going to do, we're going to check the compression dry, and then we're going to pull it back out, and then we'll put a cap full of oil in it and check it wet. And the reason you do that, if the rings are not seating, it will uh, pick compression up. If it's a valve issue, it won't pick any compression up. So let's roll it over and get an idea of what it is now. So you see it's low, it's at 60 pounds right there. So now let's put a cap of oil in it and we'll check it again. Okay, we're just gonna take about a cap full on the old caps. If you remember right, the old caps were small, so we're not gonna put any more than we have to in there. Now remember it was at 60, let's see what it does now. It's the same, so we've got a valve issue and not a ring issue. We'll check the next one the same way. All right. Just a little over 60. We really need about 90 to get it to run. Put a little oil in it. I have a feeling this is gonna be the issue with all these cylinders. There's one cylinder that don't have any compression on it whatsoever, so the valve's probably stuck completely open. These ones are probably just not seating. I don't think sitting with the, no air cleaner helped anything. All right. Yeah, that one picked it up about uh, eight pounds higher. So anyway, we got to figure out what we're going to do. We might be able to put some uh, Marble Mystery Oil or something in it and let it sit a while and see if it uh, helps anything. But if it's corrosion or you know carbon under the valves keeping it, it's not going to help a thing. So anyway, we'll decide what we're going to do and I'll figure it out. Okay, folks, uh, put some spray in it, put the plugs back in it so it could uh, sit a while. I think what I'm going to do, I mean, I've got a sure way uh, of even with 60 psi of getting this thing started but uh, it's going to take me getting these back wheels unlocked uh, both the brakes and the wheels are locked up and uh, if we pull this thing off we can get the engine spin fast enough it'll it'll start up and run you know usually sitting that long you know it's it's rough on them so some of them run and some of them don't but uh, anyway so hate to disappoint you with an, a non-running video here but uh Unfortunately, that's what we ended up with, and uh, I'm not one to, you know, I don't want to blow smoke and and not show none of this, and then uh, show a video of it running and say we got it started because, you know, it's not running. And uh, like I said, there's five cylinders with low compression, and one cylinder with no compression. And uh, like I said, I'm sure there's a valve stuck open on that particular cylinder, so maybe that'll spray will help it. And uh, anyway, we'll go from there. You know. Worst comes to worst, I mean, we can pull the head off. It uh, wouldn't take a whole, whole bunch or a whole lot of time, really, but. Okay. Let her sit a little while. Try her again. I've been towing about all day, so I haven't had time to mess with it, unfortunately. Okay, folks, day number three of this uh, first start, and uh, 
it's early morning. I've had to do a bunch of towing here lately, so uh, I keep having to leave, but uh, we're going to try it again. Uh, starter's rolling pretty slow. Uh, it didn't sound great when I, you know, from the beginning, but it's about burn up. But uh, like I said, we may end up having to pull it off, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep trying to let it soak a little while, trying to get, you know, everything freed up and get some of that carbon and stuff out of it. Like I said, if we can ever get it started, you know, I think it'll be fine. People don't realize, you know, they think, well, it should have started or it should pour more, more gas in it. The problem is, is, you know, like I said, we're low on compression. And the more this thing turns over, the more carbon gets beat up and knocked out and, and uh, the more the valves start moving good and all the surface rust gets off of the valve uh, stems and, you know, it'll, it'll increase in compression. And, you know, sometimes you just have to crank a lot on them. I mean, it's just all there is to it. There's no, nothing you can do unless you pull it off. And uh, now if you pull it, you know, down the driveway and it spins a lot faster, it probably would have already started a long time ago. But that's just the way it is. I, I get a lot of flack over, hey, you know, put more gas in it, put less gas in it. You know, it should have started or, you know, cranking that long. But, you know, this engine, like I said, this, I don't know how long it's been since it's been started. I mean, my guess is probably, I wouldn't be surprised, 30, 40 years. And uh, it... Uh, sit with the air cleaner off now the hood was on it but the air cleaner was off and that's never a good thing so all right let's get at it let's see what happens charge a little while, let's see what happens.
it started. Smoke is blown, blown out. We'll set you back a little bit where you can see the exhaust. It is running, but now I put a lot of oil in them cylinders and stuff. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. It's clearing up. Engine-wise, you know it was. Uh, Picking up and running better there. Not too bad, uh, just like the uh, 46 Dodge pickup truck, the uh, water pump's bad on it, I can hear it rattling some. But uh, it picked up on that six cylinder, so it's running on all six now. Uh, we're gonna see how easy it fires up one more time and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Now what we're going to do, just for the fun of it, we're going to pull out number one spark plug and we're going to throw that compression tester back in there and just see what the compression is picked up on. Now, do you remember, I think we was getting 60 pounds maybe? 60 or 70, I can't remember now. I just got the plugs loose. about 90 to run and we're right on 90. 
So uh, that's what I'm talking about with turning this stuff over. You know, sometimes, you know, you're either gonna burn a starter up or get a starter hot or or you need to pull it off. So don't expect to jump on one and fire it and it's gonna start right up because that don't happen that often. It did happen on that Dodge very, very surprisingly, but uh, that's just the way it goes with some of these. But uh, we'll tinker with it more and see if we can get it running good and uh, maybe the smoke will clear up. Uh, I, I did spray a lot in this. So, uh, it's probably all down in the exhaust, so it might take a little while to clear, but uh, you know, it, it may or may not be okay. The engine sounds good. There's no problems there. That water pump, like I said, I can hear it, and it's uh, it's loose. It's not as bad as the Dodge, the Dodge truck. Anyway, but I just about gave up on this one a few times because, you know, every time I'd get on it, something, you know, it, it wasn't wanting to do like it should have because it took a lot longer to get the compression to build on this one. But, but anyway, we got it, and uh, I appreciate everybody watching, and uh, watch for more on this one. Till next time. Bye.